What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are covering my top five baits for bass fishing for the month of July. It's official. It is summertime, it is hot out, it doesn't matter where you are in the country, it is summertime and the fish are active. Now we covered in previous videos where these fish go post spawn. You know, some, some stay, stay shallow, some go deep. So uh, you guys know we have so much fun making these top five baits for whatever given month. But uh, now that it's officially summer, now that it's hot out, uh, we are talking deep fish, we're talking shallow fish, power fishing, finesse fishing. So this one was extra difficult because there's so many different types of fisheries. But the way I kind of pick these baits, I think depending on the type of fishery, no matter if you're in a clear highland or lowland reservoir, if you're in a river system, a natural lake, a pond, um, there should be uh, a little variance to each of these baits that you guys can kind of apply to your fishery and uh, the, the location wherever you are in the country. So, summertime bass fishing. Metabolisms are up, temps are up, everything is going on in the water, right? You got bluegill spawn, you got shad spawning, you got all those little baby bait fish swimming around, you got grass, you got ledges and current and uh, humps, rock piles. So let's start off talking deep fish because here we're on the Tennessee River you know the Watts Bar, the Gunnersville, the the Chickamauga you know the the Kentucky Lake all that sort of stuff all that current driven fishery um, so let's talk deep and this stuff applies to your highland reservoirs your lowland reservoirs too but those fish are going out deep and they're going to be on rock if you're in a current system a river system like this they're going to be on current breaks uh, they're gonna pull up on top of humps, get in that current and feed up and then pull down. But uh, my number one bait for not just catching bass for the month of my, uh, July, but for triggering bass, we've talked about that through the years, with a crankbait, you can trigger those big schools. A lot of times this time of the year, especially those offshore fish, you can get an entire school fired up and you can catch them one after another and my favorite bait to do that is going to be some kind of deep diving crankbait my number one deep diving crankbait for this summer time is going to be a strike king 6xd it's been a staple in all our arsenal for several uh, probably decades now but uh, the strike king 6xd it just gets it done it has a real aggressive wide wobble and um it can trigger those fish even when they're not in that feeding mood or maybe it not, might not be a bite window or whatever. But with that thing down there grinding on bottom, watch out, you're going to get hooked. Grinding on bottom, deflecting off, <laughs> deflecting off the rock piles, uh, burning, 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 pause. You deflect off that rock pile, you pause it boom, they eat it. And then it's important to get right back in there because you can get that school fired up and you can catch five, six, seven, ten in a row. But a Strike King 6XD, it, a crankbait, a deep diving crankbait is my number one deep bait. Now with that said, two great alternatives. The Rapala, the DT20. DT stands for Dives 2. That's Dives 220 foot. Again, these fish are deep. They get down in that cooler water. They're down there. Uh, I love the uh, Chartreuse Blues. Uh, the shad patterns. And then if you want to go a little bit deeper, we're not going quite the 10XD. We're going to the Azuma. That's the 22. Uh, that is a great bait if, to get down a little bit deeper than that DT20, you know, that 20 foot diving depth and that Strike King 6XD. Again, those deep fish, it's all about um, offshore structure, right? So you're looking for that rock. Now, those same fish, right? My next bait up is going to be a jig. You know, it doesn't matter if you're summer nighttime fishing, you know, that's another key thing that really comes into play uh, these summer months. You know, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on who you ask, 
Uh, there's a lot more boat traffic, a lot more traffic just on uh, the water, on the bodies, on these waterways during the summer months. You know, you have your your uh, pleasure boaters, you have your uh, water skiers, wakeboarders, what, whatever, right? There's just a lot more traffic. So a lot of guys will escape the heat of the sun and the boat traffic of just all the extra traffic on the water and go out and fish at night. But either way, a jig, half ounce, five eighths, even up to a three quarter ounce jig. Um, I like something like a, a pitching jig or something like that if I'm fishing off offshore. Again, with my trailer, I'm gonna be uh, real selective with my trailer. I'm going with something that has a lot of action. I'm not gonna go with like a sweet beaver, you know, Reaction Innovations beaver, something that has kind of that dead action. I'm going with something with like an X-Zone Adrenaline Craw or uh, a net bait like a Paca Craw or Paca Slim. I'm, I'm going with something that has a lot of action, uh, especially when I'm fishing in the heat of the day and I'm popping that jig up, it's crashing down those those kickers, those tentacles, those pinchers, whatever you wanna call them, are actively swimming back there. But a jig, okay? A lot of times, it's a one-two punch. You pull up to the same rock pile, you start with the crankbait, you try and get them fired up, you either, you do or you don't, but then you're that one-two punch, you can go down there and slow fish with that jig and sometimes, they'll eat one or the other, right? And a lot of times after the one bite dies, the crankbait bite dies, you can kind of let them position back up and pick them off one at a time on the jig, okay? So that's my number two bait. Now I did add a bait in here that is quickly becoming uh, one of our favorites this time of the year because it's kind of a, a combination of both techniques. Uh, it's gonna be this guy right here. A swing head jig, biffle head, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a weedless jig. So it's kind of a combination of a crankbait because you're down there swimming it. It's banging off rock. It's deflecting. You can slow it down. You can drag it. Uh, hands down, our favorite bait on that is going to be the Z craw. Another great one is going to be that adrenaline craw. But um, June bug color, that is a must, especially summertime. It doesn't matter if it's worm fishing or whatever, that June bug just seems to be the color uh, when you're fishing in the summertime. I don't know if it has to do with algae blooms, just water color, color, color. Uh, I don't know what it is, but June bug is the color for us all through these summer months. But some kind of swinging head jig or biffle head or whatever you wanna call it, that is a bait that can be fished slow like a jig, it can be fished on bottom like a swim bait, or it could be cranked through those rock piles like a crankbait. So that is a must, summertime. All right. One other one that I wanna talk about for um, maybe your deeper clear water fish, you know, like I said, it's so hard to pick just five baits that'll work on every type of fishery, right? You're not gonna be throwing a frog if you're a guy fishing the Great Lakes, right? Not necessarily, right? Clear water, deep, clear water, colder water, no grass. So you can't really recommend the same baits for everybody. But with that said, you know, a swim bait, some kind of just, uh, just a, a a single swim bait. This is that X-Zone Swammer. You know, we've talked about that guy has a real aggressive kick, but uh, now's the time to throw your Kitech, your 4.8s. There's that, there's that Swammer. That's the bigger one. But uh, if you're a guy that doesn't want to necessarily throw a June bug, uh, biffle head or um, swinging jig, that swim bait is another must. So if you're a guy that's fishing a clear high highland, you know, clear water highland reservoir, that is a, something that you can kind of switch in in place of this guy right here. You know, a crankbait is still going to work on a highland reservoir. A jig is still going to work. You might want to switch out your colors from from uh, say June bug to more of like your watermelons or your green pumpkin black flake. Uh, but if you're in any kind of dingy or stained water, that June bug is a must. So gave you guys some alternatives for 
the deep water fish. Now again, it's all about rock, okay? If you're on a fishery that doesn't have a lot of rock or like main lake points with like chunk rock or something like that, um, look for shadows. A lot of time, late afternoon, you can see the sun set and you get these shadows, these shadow lines. You know, maybe it's a bluff wall or something like that in a Highland Reservoir, you got those long river canyons. You got a bluff wall, it puts that shade line two, three, four feet off of that bluff wall. Guess what? Those fish are gonna be positioned in that, uh, that shade line. The good thing about summertime, July especially, it's hot. These fish are active, but they're predictable, right? We, we kind of talked about the deep fish. Shallow fish, it's all about cover as well. You know, we talked about the rock for the deep fish. Could be deep grass lines. As far as the shallow fish, you're, you're looking for shade. You're looking for isolated pieces of cover or you're looking for shade, right? Grass lines, good healthy grass where those fish can get in there, get out of that bright sun and ambush. So, perfect example right here. You got a five foot shade line along this entire bank. I could literally get up along this bank and fish parallel with some kind of top water, some kind of uh, jig maybe. Maybe, heck, maybe I'm not throwing a, uh, a casting jig or a um, pitching jig. Maybe now I'm switching over to a flipping jig and I'm actually picking apart those, those isolated pieces of wood or whatever it, be, it may be, but a pitching jig. So again, these baits that I picked out for you are, you know, they're, they're you can, depending on the depth or the type of fishery, it could be a casting jig out deep or it could be a flipping jig or a punch jig up shallow. Same thing with the uh, with the swim bait. You could be throwing an offshore swammer on a Matt Allen head or you could be throwing a beast hook shallow through the grass uh, and catch them that way too. So just because I'm talking about these baits in that category or that depth, you can make little subtle adjustments to these baits and fish them shallow, fish them in clear water, stained water, etc. Okay. So again, I'm going to be fishing the shade that makes those fish predictable. So I'm looking for isolated pieces of cover. I'm looking for good, healthy grass and I'm looking for shade. So if I am shallow fishing, man, it's go time with a frog, either the bully two or the, the snag proof, the Bobby's perfect frog. I am putting, picking up a 7.3 a, a extra heavy and I am hitting all these little shade pockets and it's power on power, 65 pound braid, extra heavy rod, strong reel, and it's war, right? It is so much fun. So that's probably summertime fishing. If I'm fishing shallow, a frog has got to be because it's, it's, it's visual bites, right? You see the explosions. Uh, when you hook them back in the thick stuff, it's war, it's power on power, like I said, but, but uh, a frog is probably my number one shallow bait. Probably my number one summer shallow bait is going to be a frog. Again, uh, play around with a size of frogs. You know, a lot of time here on Chick, if we can't get bit on a full size frog, we'll downsize to like that jackal kaiara. It's a little smaller, finessier frog kind of matches those baby shad, baby bluegill size better, but a frog is my number one shallow bait. Okay, now for you guys that uh, don't have a lot of grass or <clears throat> you don't have a lot of thick, heavy, nasty stuff, this guy right here, a popper. Either the Pop Max or the, the World Pop, those are my two favorite poppers. This is something that I can throw out. I can do, 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 get that thing walking side to side and then kill it. I can bloop it, I can pop it, I can walk it. That Pop Max is a very special popper. It's, it's fairly substantial in size. I mean, here it is compared to a Strike King 6XD, okay? It's a good size popper, so you're not going to lose uh, <clears throat> you're not going to lose quality or size of fish throwing a popper. But when I'm fishing down a bank, let's say this guy right here, I see that piece of wood right there. 
down there about 20 or 30 yards, there's some stumps, some overhangs. I can throw this popper out there, make a nice, good, quiet cast, let it sit there for a second, let those rings kind of disperse, and then bloop. Two things are gonna happen. One, you're not gonna get bit, and then it's bloop, 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 let it sit. Or two, on that first bloop, it's just gonna, any fish in that area is gonna come over and be interested in what's going on. And when you just do that single bloop, it gets their attention. You know, the cast, that bait hitting the lake, hitting the water, making those, that, uh, those rings that, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna say like, whatever, the, the di disturbance, right, on the water is gonna get their, get their interest peaked. And then you do that one little bloop, let it sit, I've had more bites doing that with a popper than I have just bloop, 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 right? Same thing, you wanna change up your cadence, just like a jerk bait. Toot, 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 let it sit. Bloop, let it sit. Bloop, 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 let it sit. On the flip side, I mean, if you don't want to sit there and pop, you can throw like a buzz bait or a, or a whopper plopper or something that, something like that. I mean, there's a ton of top water baits you can throw this time of the year. But for me, that one, two punch, if I'm throwing grass, I'm going frog. If I'm fishing shallow, isolated pieces of cover or a grass line, I'm going with a popper. Like I said, either that pop max or that world pop. Um, what else? I think I forgot two things. So I talked about um, clearer water. One thing that's huge with clearer water, if you're a fairly featureless you're fishing a featureless area. One thing I learned a long time ago is to treat the uh, lake, the color line, like a shade line, if that makes sense. So color line, say you're fishing a lake that has <clears throat> 10, 15, 20 foot of visibility. You see bottom, but when you look out, it's kind of that lighter color. And then the deeper you get, it gets really dark. That's the color line. That's where you wanna make your cast. And the last but not least, <clears throat> you deep guys and shallow guys, a shaky head. That T-Mac right here, that guy paired up on a shaky head, <clears throat> depending on the depth, either quarter ounce, three eighths, half ounce, deep, eighth ounce, three sixteenths, quarter ounce, shallow. This is a bait that you also can fish either depth, your shallow fish, your deep fish, but summertime, especially when you get a lot of grass, a shaky head is another must. So guys, I know it wasn't exactly five, but I shrunk it down quite a bit. So there it is, guys, my top five or six or seven, whatever it may be, baits for the month of July. Keep it simple. If you're an offshore guy, throw that worm, throw that wobble head or jig or, or crankbait. If you're a shallow guy, throw that frog, throw that uh, popper, throw that worm, and you guys will catch a lot of fish this month. Guys, as always, we appreciate uh, the support. Thank you for watching. I'll link everything down below in the video description, our favorite colors and all these baits. Um, if you guys like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.